Okay, so we've got a quick, very quick and dirty demo of some of the stuff in Drop Fleet. Uh, we're just using a black table here, but in the real game, this will be a piece of planet about you know the size of a medium-sized European country with cities on it and stuff like that. But we're not going to cover any of that. This is just a very basic movement and stuff like that. So can you show us a little bit about how the combat mechanic works in the simplified way? Yeah, sure. Here we've got um, a little tiny little UCM fleet versus one Scourge heavy cruiser. Here we've got a UCM cruiser and two UCM missile frigates. We're using the strike carrier models for those because we don't have them with us, but they, they'll, do the, they'll do the job. Great. Okay, we'll do the UCM first. Sounds like a plan. So range and shooting, this is, this is one of the crucial mechanics in drop fleet. Every ship has a scan range. Um, in this case with the UCM cruiser is nine it's inches. It's uh, six inches for them. Six inches. Six inches for a UCM cruiser. And it's six as well six for, for the scourge, scourge yeah. to keep things simple. Okay. Um, then every enemy ship has a signature. The bigger the ship, the bigger the signature. So something like a dreadnought or a battleship is going to have a big signature, like 12. Little frigate's going to have like two. And signature represents like both size quote. and like heat signature yeah, yeah, and all that stuff. Yeah, it's how easy that ship is to spot. Great, okay. You know, so um, a standard cruiser is going to have a signature of about six. Mm -hmm. So we'll call it six here for the sake of simplicity. Right. And the last part is spikes, which is when you fire your weapons or do things like extreme maneuvers, you pick up energy spikes. Okay. There's a minor spike and a major spike. Minor spike adds six inches to the range. Major spike adds 12. To, to the scanning range. Yeah. Okay. So, so and you add all three together to get the actual shooting range. Okay. So this is like the blip on Dreadus or yeah, exactly. you know, so incoming you, torpedoes yeah, or I mean, whatever. You right. know that the enemy ship is there, uh -huh. but you can't target it accurately. Okay. Gotcha. And then when you're in those ranges, you can target it accurately. You can do cool stuff like silent run, and then your signature drops to nothing. Okay. Just turn all the drives off and just drift. Sweet. You can't shoot and stuff when you're doing that, so... Yeah. <laughs> no. We're assuming these ships aren't on sign of running orders or anything, they're just on normal, regular, standard orders. Right. Yeah. So, so thematically, just so I can ask this question, this game is a little bit more like, instead of something like, uh, you know, broadside ship combat, this is more like submarines, a little bit more like Battlestar Galactica, you yeah, know, where yeah, you're guessing a little bit more about where yeah. people are and there's stuff There's a like bit that. of that. There's also the orbital layers thing, which is crucial to the game. We're oh. not going to do that here because we've right. just got cruisers against, you know, but there's three orbital layers, high orbit, low orbit, atmosphere. Okay. Atmosphere is the submarine warfare part because if you go into atmosphere and only certain ships can do that, mm -hmm. it's basically like going underwater. You know, right. Firing through atmosphere is like firing through soup. You right. can't detect anything through, there's so much interference in the way. Mm -hmm. So all the ranges just drop right off, your energy of your high-powered rail guns drops right off because they just burn up in the atmosphere. Right. So that, um, that protects some of the smaller ships in the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But not many ships can go atmospheric. You know, if, if a big ship loses its engines, it will obviously decay and then burn up in the atmosphere, which is all really cool and everything. But <laughs> we won't use any of that here, we're just we're going to assume they're all in like high orbit and they're just going to move and fight. So you see some simple mechanics. Yeah. Awesome, okay. Okay, so Simon, do you want to take it away? Okay, so we're going to start with the, um, uh, the UCM cruiser. It's armed with a burn-through laser, which is essentially a giant energy weapon that kind of does what the name says, really. It burns through um, uh, armor and tries to get to the inside of the ship. Okay. It's also got um, a couple of railgun turrets on the top. And what normally, in drop fleets, if you want to, you can, on standard orders, you can find one weapon and move. Right. This one has got three, and it'd be kind of cooler if it fought, or if it fired all of them. Right. So it's going to do um, an order called Weapons Free. Okay. And Weapons Free just means you get to fire everything. Right. However, you will pick up a major spike, as they described earlier. Right. Okay. So its signature has just gone from six to 18. Right, right. So if there were other ships on the board that were further away than the Scourge Heavy Cruiser was, you'd be able to see them from, see them from much yeah. further away. Right, right now. It's got to fight everything. Yeah, right it's now we're up close and personal, so it doesn't yeah. matter, so Weapons right. Free. And this Let is where go. the Scourge are really deadly, probably. So Similar to, to Drop Zone. Up yeah. close, they're really dangerous. They are really Some dangerous. of their weapons get bonuses if you get really close. Uh -huh. They've got okay. a Scold roll yeah. that yeah. does extra damage when you get in close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very Scourge. So what I'm going to do is you can't turn when your weapon's free, and that's one of the limiting factors. Okay. All the orders have pros and cons. Right. So this one, you get to fight everything, but you're limited, you can't turn. Okay. So what it's yeah. going to do is it's going to drift forward, sort of half of its movement, which is three. It doesn't want to get any closer to the Scourge than it needs to at this right. point. Exactly. <laughs> then it's going to open fire. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if Dave wants to roll some dice or whether... Yeah, we'll, um, do, um, we'll do the tiddly turrets first. Okay, so the tiddly turret, it gets four shots per turret. Two shots per turret, right? Um, for, uh, yeah, two shots per turret. Oh, you're right, turret. two shots per turret. Two shots on five, those turrets. Just out of curiosity, we said these are railgun turrets on yes. the top. 
How big are those in scale to like a drop zone? Oh model? yeah, so these, um, I've a actually, gun on I've a actually tank. the turret on the little tiny one, I've actually built one of those in 10 mil scale as on the Avenger, the big strike carrier model. Yeah, yeah. It is that big in 10 mil scale. So about as big as this table. Okay, something, something okay. Something like that. Um, then um, that one is bigger, <laughs> that one would probably be about this big. Right. You know, this ship is about 12 feet long in 10 mil scale. Right, yeah, because you got the, the real yeah. deal. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is, um, this is 0 0.1 mil scale. Right. <laughs> that's very, right. very that's small. It, it's exactly yeah. 100 times smaller than drop zone. Wow. That makes it very easy to tie the two together, you know. Okay. okay. So, we're going to do the shooting. Yep. In, in drop zone, um, sorry, drop zone, drop fleet, weapons have a lock value. Um, okay. This is the roll required to hit the target. Mm -hmm. So, in this case, the small rail guns have a lock value of four or more. So, they roll some dice, on a four or more, he hits the Scourge Cruise well. Well, we'll get that, so two hits for okay. the average. And two misses. That's also worth saying, actually, we didn't measure, we didn't check to see whether we could shoot the Scourge, but right. we know that the UCM cruiser has a scan of six, the Scourge Heavy cruiser has a signature of six, therefore the range is 12, 12. Right. and therefore okay. we can see that So you're adding the range. two halves together yeah, always. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're really right. up close and personal here. Pre-measuring is allowed as well, because there's obviously a lot of adding of ranges and things like that, right. so you can do pre-measuring, it's assumed everyone's got scanners. Great. Yeah. There's okay. not really many variables in space, everything is quite known. Right, so yeah. So hence pre-measuring it. Okay, great. So, with two hits, mm -hmm. now in um, drop fleet, we said, well, weapons are very big, they're very powerful. Mm -hmm. it's, as they've described, that weapon is huge, even right. a small one. Yeah. If you've hit your target, you've pretty much guaranteed to do damage. Right. So we don't have wound rolls okay. in, drop, in drop fleet. Yeah. Those two hits are two wounds done to the target. Okay, wow. Now, we also have a mechanic, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, you get a critical hit. So if you roll two higher, and the roll required to damage, and those of you, sorry, to hit. Right. Those of you in drop zone, that roll applies in the damage phase. Right. Drop fleet, it applies into the hit roll. Right. You bypass their armor. Now, as neither of these were sixes, mm -hmm. he doesn't bypass the armor, and the Scourge Heavy Cruiser gets to take the saving throw. Okay, Again, so they, every, like everybody has a passive. Everyone yeah, yeah, has. Yeah, they have force field. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like well, just seriously large, heavy hull armor. Yeah, it's largely right. just getting through the armor. So it's okay. going to hit regardless, but, you know, you, you want to beat that roll by two or more, which makes weapons lock value of four is not marvelous because you need sixes to bypass that armor whereas right. lower lock values are exponentially more powerful because you're going to get you're going to be ignoring that armor save a lot which makes them yeah. very much scarier than these are little pea shooter guns remember these yeah. are like some of the smallest guns you get yeah. really. uh -huh. Uh -huh. so that's two wounds the scourge heavy cruiser up should i take some saves yep take some it's saves good to save a four or more and that's one fail and one pass. So he's taken one he's DP. He's taken one, one DP. Now he has 11 to begin with. Wow. So he's taken one, he's got 10 left. Right. But these are small guns and it's only one cruiser firing against the heavy cruiser. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, it does then have its main gun. Right. Which is the burn through laser. Now burn through laser gets two dice okay. and hits on a three or more. Okay. Today's going to show this mechanic off here. Okay. So there are two dice, on a three or more you hit. So this, isn't the, this is hopefully not the only dice I'm going to roll for this weapon, but okay. we'll see. So he's missed once. And he's hit once. Okay. Not a great start. Not a great start. However, he's got a hit. Mm -hmm. So he rolls again. Oh, it's a change. As you burn yeah. through yeah. layers burn and through layers. Like that, but right. now I need fours, mm -hmm. not threes this time. It gets harder each time. Gotcha. Oh. No. No. So, so that, that, was, was, that was pretty terrible. That was my, slightly my, depressing. My That's dice it. rolling is universally terrible. So it always gonna, has been and it always will be. Are we going to call this the mild <laughs> sunburn laser now? Yes. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the scholarship was just like tan, and that's about it. Right. It doesn't have to make a save. Which I failed, and the Scourge Cruiser is now up to 2 DP. Okay. And that's all the guns on the on the cruiser. Right. Now the Scourge Heavy Cruiser gets to go. Okay. Now the Scourge Heavy Cruiser, it wants to get close to the UCM ships. So it's gonna also go weapons free, mm -hmm. but it's going to go as far up as it can. Right. It's gonna come right up here. And it's gonna have a go at the uh, UCM cruiser. Okay. Now the Scourge Cruiser has ripper has what we call ripper cannons, although that may may Yeah, it's, it's a placeholder. It's sort of a placeholder at the moment. At the moment. Mm -hmm. It's a weapon. That sounds pretty awesome by the way, ripper yeah. cannons. So, it only yeah. fires one shot per weapon and it has three of them. Okay. One on the um, top and then two on the sides. Okay. Yeah, generally you can actually see. These the long weapons. veins are representing those yeah. weapons. Yeah, in some of the most of the weapons you can actually physically see them on the model, generally. Right. Great. Okay. So, shall I roll for the Scourge? Yep, go for it. Okay, so it gets three shots and it damages it hit well, it hits. Its lock value is a three. So it needs three or more to hit the cruiser. Now that's both a good and a bad roll. <laughs> so I've got two utter failures there. Right. But the six is too higher, so it's done a critical hit. Okay. Now, the other point of note in this with this particular weapon is it has a damage value of two rather than one. 
Okay. So that's four damage. So well, not four damage because it doesn't double the damage. It just ignores the armor. Oh, okay. So gotcha. I do two damage straight to well, the. Still just going to carry two. straight through and hit me for two, and there's nothing I can do about it. Which okay. Is, straight there. Which is painful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we have what's called a close action weapon. Mm -hmm. Now, in drop fleet, that represents swarms of missiles, um, sort of small rail guns, sort of lots of point defense, mm -hmm. basically cute, small amounts. All of your little weapons. Shots, little basically, stuff. they have a finite range of your scan range. Yeah. Well, that's it. Would that also represent like the Defensive fighters, or is that a separate uh, that's mechanic? a separate, separate mechanic? mechanic. There, there are fighters, bombers, torpedoes, but that's that's yeah. outside of this. Yeah. Okay. But um, yeah, they, it's they always close action weapons have a finite range of your scan. That's it. Okay. It's assumed that beyond that range, enemy countermeasures will just blow them up. Right. Yeah. Because they're just little missiles in space. You know, if they're traveling for a long time, then they're just getting stopped. They're going to lose power. They're going to run out of fuel. There's point, there's, there's, yeah. there's, there's point defense junk. all over the place. Right, so it's right. assumed that beyond that, they're yeah. just going to dissipate. So, mm -hmm. so this is the mechanic yeah. we'll explain yeah. now. He's well close. So it's so it's within six inches. Yeah. Um, I get with my Scourge Heavy Cruiser, I get D6 plus two close action attacks. Okay. So again, I would roll the dice, and, get and I would get a six. Look at uh, that. So course. I would get eight close action more attacks. Dice. <laughs> we might need some <laughs> more. Need to roll some I'll, I'll borrow dice. those for the moment. Okay, we know they're two. We know they're yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very, very nicely, they're both from the same damage. Yeah. yeah. So, these again need three to damage. Okay. Um, and oh, this also will explain the scold mechanic. Scourge, if they are within six inches of their target, um, ha have a scold rule, which means that the enemy suffers a plus one modifier to their armor save. So if I hadn't critically hit the Mid. UCM cruiser with my first main gun, would have been worse. his right. save would have gone from a three plus to a four plus. Lots right. and lots and lots of scourge weapons have scold. Have scold. Not all of them, but because lots of all of the them. heat of the plasma sitting on the yeah, hull yeah, and burning yeah, exactly. through. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. I've got eight shots here. Mm -hmm. um, so I roll eight dice. I need three or more to damage. Just to try not to be too violent <laughs> with my roll. And that was a very good oh, that roll. Was, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. So I've missed twice. Wasn't and my kind of we'll dice roll. Take this. So currently, I have three critical hits. Three normal hits and two misses. Yikes. So I'm going to take the two misses off to one side. Well, and now what happens is Dave has what's called point defense value, okay. which is all his defensive turrets. Again, sort of some of them are trying to stop those missiles around. up close. Some of them will get through, but hopefully not all of them will get through. Right. Okay. So Dave gets five point defense dice for his cruiser. The okay. smaller the ship, the less point defense. So small ships are very vulnerable to close action weapons, whereas something like a dreadnought gets like 10 point defense. Mm -hmm. So all these all these missile attacks, while they might seem spectacular, yeah. big ships are just going to shrug them off. They're just going to go, oh, I, I can just stop you all day. Right. Especially if you attack with only one ship. But if you attack with a swarm of ships, say, um, maybe four, maybe even six um, frigates, mm -hmm. they're going to, they, you group their attacks together uh, and they will and overcome. There's only, and there's only one point defense And you only roll. get the point defense roll oh, once. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So against, against something like a cruiser by itself, the dreadnought's going to shrug it off. So you it's all about brute force yes. as opposed to overcome yeah, the it's all about, That's attacks. about squadroning small ships together as well. Missile right. frigates are pretty hopeless on their own. They need to work together to achieve So things. the way it's going to work is Dave needs to roll five or a six and he stops the point, stops one, one incoming Stop one again, missile. it's bad rolling. So I had three normal hits. To stop a critical hit, it requires two point defense, successful rolls. Okay. So he can't stop one of the critical hits, but he can, however, remove one of the non-critical hits. Okay. Which would mean that I've done, these only have damage one, I've done three, four, five damage to his ship. So he would take five dice. Sorry. No, I've two these saves. Three, two these, saves. These three I bypass his armor. Okay. So the two which are remaining of yeah. the normal ones he gets saves from. Wow. On a four or more, because mm -hmm. the three or more save drops. Because well, it's up by one. Right, yeah. So I've done three damage to him so far. Oh, I've saved both of those. <laughs> Last, I actually rolled some half reasonable dice. However, it does yeah, yeah. mean <laughs> that the ship has now taken five, five damage. damage. Right. Which is important and actually very, very fortuitous because it means we can explain another mechanic, <laughs> which is crippling damage, crippled. Oh, the ship yeah. has taken lost half oh, its damage yeah. points. Okay. Now it's crippled. So we'd roll once on a table, which we don't have to hand, mm -hmm. but essentially you would roll a D3 to see which table you roll on, so three tables. Okay. And then you roll a D3 again to see which result you apply. And, and the three tables are probably like, Crew weapons and yeah, yeah, it's sort of like you know, like right. this is, of damage this is the point where you lose your shield, you lose your energy, you lose your engines, okay. you lose weapons. Yeah, so um, it's kind of a death yeah. spiral. And on top yeah, of that, you would DP. also a lot. Well, I'd say three quarters of the results mm -hmm. on the table also inflict another three damage points. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah if you have reactor failure yeah. and it blows up. And the idea eye. of this is not only does it help um, reduce the lifespan of some of the ships, mm -hmm. but also with frigates that a lot of them only have six wounds. Okay. So therefore, or if they suffer a crippling, or four wounds. So if they suffer a crippling, if they suffer half damage, right. 
there's a good chance the result on the table will actually finish them off. Yeah. And it helps neaten up the game, stops you having hundreds of ships with a couple of damage points on each of them, right, right. Yeah, and it helps you clean up the battlefield. Frigates, yeah. um, one thing that um, Andy always wished they'd done differently with Gothic was the fact that like, escorts died so quickly. They only ever had like one DP, so right. they, they just they were killed too often and right. you know, competitive players never really used them because they, they just died too, right. too easily. Right, but for the most part yeah. now these guys take one critical hit, one regular hit, and then they're in real trouble. They are in yeah, trouble. Yeah, they're yeah. in trouble, they have a but, chance to but there's, a right. st there's off, quite often they hang around annoying me for ages and you're like, <laughs> just, just die. And they, they've just got the capacity to just remain. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, you don't want them loads of crippled frigates all over the place. So, right. you know, say as Simon says, more often than not they'll die, but they have a chance of sticking out right. and staying around. And also because we've given them, say, six wounds to begin with or five wounds to begin with, they still have to suffer at least three before they take a crippling roll, or two to three. Okay. Which does mean that actually you're going to, unlike drop zone where units dry quite quickly, mm -hmm. and in drop fleet we've tried to make a slightly different variation of the game where things are a lot tougher, right. but they do die if you focus on them, they will come apart. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, I mean you have less models as well, you know, okay. you have less models and we don't have any really big nasty weapons here, like we don't have dreadnoughts and battleships that are just like level right. cruisers and, yeah. you know. What, what <laughs> would you say in average game size, how many models would you have in an average game? Um, in a standard sort of tournament level game, you're probably looking at a, in the region of maybe one big heavy ship. Mm -hmm. um, um, maybe six six cruiser type ships, maybe eight cruiser types, depending on how you build your army. Right. Okay. Um, and then maybe four four to um, four to eight frigates. So again, depending on how you build your army. Kind of, kind of considerable to drop zone in that you have about the contents of two, maybe two starter sets plus a you know oh, yeah. a few little, yes, plus right. a few little things. things. Yeah, yeah right. Right. that's okay. about that's okay. about right. Great. You know, you've got stuff going on on the ground too, but that's generally tokens most of the time. Yeah. Right. Okay. You, know, you can deploy assets like you know guns and. <laughs> Tank, troops tank, that are trying to get tank, off the tanks. Well, that's it, yeah. and they're trying to sort of capture cities and hold ground. And oh, wow. in orbit, your ships are also. You're, you're trying to stop their infantry, they're trying to stop your infantry. Right. And you're whole, trying to hold critical locations up in orbit, maybe hold geosynchronous yeah, orbit this around. Is, this cities. is where a lot of the, um, the nuances come in. Because yeah, the combat mechanics are pretty simple. You know, right. Right? Once you've played it a few times, it, it becomes very quick. Right. You know, you, damage happens, ships mm. die. You know, here in just like a few minutes, this UCM cruise has taken 5 DP, which is. It's actually probably going to take a couple more from that critical roll, so it's probably right. up to sort of seven or eight DP by now, and then mm -hmm. a few more, and then it's dead. So right. ships die, mm -hmm. and yeah. stuff happens. Right. But generally, a lot of the the orbital layers and the maneuver, mm -hmm. the first couple of turns are a game of cat and mouse because right. a lot of the time you're kind of silent running, silent running, silent running. Then weapons free. Weapons free. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then this yeah. guy, you know, he might like go into atmo to yeah. escape being killed. Yeah, yeah. This and guy it's, yeah. Worth, it's worth mentioning right. that when you're in when you're firing through different orbital layers, uh -huh. your lock value goes up by one. So right. if, you, if, if my ship was in high orbit and Dave's was in low orbit, right. all my rolls would actually require a four okay. to hit, yeah. and therefore a six to critical. Right. Okay. So actually you the... can escape each other just by being in a yeah. different layer. That's, that's the Merc yeah, yeah. mechanic yeah. you're talking yeah. about. I mean, as, a, as a bigger ship, the bigger the ship, the riskier it is to fly in low orbit. Because mm -hmm. if you get critical with an engine failure, you're in big trouble because that massive dreadnought is going to just decay and burn up. Right. So a lot of the time dreadnoughts are kind of, oh, I'm going to stay in high orbit and yeah, you've got, a chance, my armor to, holds on. Yeah, you've got yeah. a chance to fix engine failures if you have one, mm -hmm. but often you don't have time if you're in low orbit. You know, you might get one roll and if you fail it, you've got to burn up and die. So that's yeah. Um, yeah. stuff like orbital bombardment, that has to happen in low orbit. Mm -hmm. So those ships have to go down and to do their, to do their nasty work. To right, the to stop the, the infantry that are making land yeah. and yeah, yeah. like that. To pound the drop zones and yeah, essentially the exactly. player areas are. Some scenarios <laughs> might call for cities to be demolished. Right. You know, you can very occasionally nuke cities in certain instances, which is pretty fun. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> the only way to be sure. That's, um, that's the thing that, that comes in that comes in with the game. Right, right. You know, there's there's a lot of different things beyond just combat, yeah. but this gives you a, a broad overview. Right, yeah. that's that's the, that's similar to like that's like drop fleet's version of CQB, yeah. like that's the kind of sub game that's running along the side that's important. Yes, but, yeah. but out Outside the main combat mechanics, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, we, 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 if you want to, we can do the, the um, free as quickly. But essentially, similar to drop zone, there is an alternating mechanic. So you take it in, you take your battle groups, and you ultimately activate them. Okay. So that you don't just do your whole fleet, and your opponent does their whole right, fleet. Right. Yeah. I go. I figured you guys weren't going to go. To yeah, I yeah, yeah, go, yeah, right? yeah. And it's a little bit different to drop zone. Mm -hmm. um, and we're not going to go into that here. Um, but it, there is a alternating um, mechanic. Great. Yeah. So these guys would go shoot. The these cruiser. guys would basically move up, 
and these guys having missile frigates. Now the way we're going to need more dice for this, <laughs> but the way they work is they get two d6. No, sorry, they get d6 plus four shots each. Wow. So the scourge gets scold mm -hmm. and damage on a three. The UCM only damage on a four mm -hmm. and don't have scold, right. but they get weight of dice. Weight of dice. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and the UC uh, the uh, scourge cruiser again only gets five point defense. So the odds are he only stop one to two, sort of one and a half. Rolls right. and stuff. But they're throwing 20 dice. But they're throwing d6 plus 4 each, so potentially they could throw 24 at him. Right. Which, you know, is going to do a lot of damage to him. Yeah, yeah. Especially as he only has a 4-up save to begin with. Right, okay. Okay, so in true Scourge fashion, they can be a little bit of a glass cannon. Yes, you know? yeah. exactly, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, well, you might, you might as well leave it there. Cause leave it there, and you've yeah. Had, um, you've, you've had a good little little oh, talk through the, ba the basic firing mechanics and mm -hmm. you know movement there's obviously turns and all that kind of thing comes that you didn't see any of that because we, we started up close and personal so it's mainly just right. a case of boom bang <laughs> sort of, that's sort of what we saw here yeah. but there's, right. um, there's a lot of maneuvering goes on yeah. cool stuff and, and it's probably worth mentioning as well that in the game there's going to be a ground objective that the infantry are trying to uh, achieve right. and then also a space or an orbit objective that your ships are trying to achieve. Okay, so that'd be like taking a space station or is that more like just blowing up a certain amount of people? Well, it's usually things like taking space and holding critical points on the battlefield that they're also trying to hold oh, okay. um, and trying to support the infantry. As they've said, it might be trying to bombard cities. Yeah. Um, Kill the Admiral is always a good one. Right. Right. Oh, oh yeah, or the equivalent things. of a like set yeah. up in a good spot so the equivalent of like a focal point yeah. mission you're like flooding yeah. in this part of the table. And it gives, yeah. it gives the game much more depth because you've got, your in, regardless of which scenario you're playing, your infantry will always have a role to play right. and if we always need to have them in your in your force right. and your ships will also have a role to play which isn't just trying to kill your opponent's fleet. Right. So you so still have the combined arms, yeah. the combined yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. not about big guys, yeah. it's yeah. all it's, about... It feels like it feels like one of Hawk's games, even though the mechanics are totally different from Drop Zone. Yeah. Thanks very much guys, <laughs> really appreciate it. Hope that's alright. Our pleasure.